Hello and welcome back. Today we're gonna throw a salt cellar. I'm gonna, it's gonna be ovaled, so I'm intending on throwing this without a floor so I can alter the shape of the wall. Um, this is about a pound and a quarter of clay. And when you're opening items all the way to the bat, um, you wanna make sure as you're pulling out that you're compressing with your opposite hand thumb. So here I'm pulling out with my right index finger and pushing down with my left thumb. And um, I'm gonna pull these walls up. Be careful about how thin you make the bottom because there is no floor, it does tend to want to come off the bat. Uh, we're gonna put a flange in it. So that means I'm gonna leave my rim a little bit thicker. I'm pushing down with my right index on the inside half of that rim. We clean everything off um, in order to make it easier to alter the shape. This is kind of important. You don't want those walls to be super sticky. Um, and then we're gonna clean up the outside with a wooden knife tool. And uh, we'll get back and show you how to oval this. Okay, so let's talk about altering the walls. Um, we're gonna undercut this with a fettling knife on the bat, and my hands are really dry. I am gonna kind of pick up and squeeze. Um, I also will use a teeny bit of water to float the wall. Um, the dryness of this clay is pretty soupy. I have grown impatient when I start altering things and start moving them around probably a little earlier than I should. Uh, if you wait for it to be leather hard, it's past your point of alteration. Um, if you, the inside wall is cracking, that's a sign that you're altering too wet and step away from it for a second, um, let it set up and then come back to it. You can push this into any shape you want. The sky's the limit, which is what's really fun about um, doing these projects. Um, you can do ovals, squares, heart shapes, infinity symbol shapes, you name it. Um, and so I just kind of push it around until I find a shape that I like and then I'm gonna let this set up to leather hard. Um, come back and put a floor on it with a slab and then I'm also gonna build a lid out of a slab and we'll talk about that once um, this sets up a little bit. Okay, so I included this little bit here um, because a lot of us are learning in community studios um, and working alongside a lot of other potters and sometimes things happen and get bumped and that's okay. We can repair them. Um, so I'm gonna take a bit of wet clay and make a coil that's fairly narrow and then just sort of flatten it out with my fingers and slip and score that in. I'll take um, my hands which are dry to blend it and then a little bit of water on my finger alongside a rib to smooth all that down and um, so I'm showing you this to show you that not all is lost. If your pots get bumped you can fix them. Um, just take a deep breath and you know work it um, slowly back into that little flange there.
Okay, so first you want to roll out a slab and it needs to be just a little bit bigger than your piece that you made on the wheel. Um, we are going to compress both sides of our slab, the one for the lid and the one for the floor uh, with our rib and I usually do this in two directions and it helps um, prevent stress cracks. You're going to mark on the interior and the exterior with your needle tool and that will give you a roundabouts idea of where you need to score. Score the bottom of your form and then score the slab, slip, attach, and then cut with a fettling knife all the way around the wall. Okay, so we're gonna put a little seam on the inside and a seam on the outside. I slip the interior where I scored, but I don't slip the coil so that it doesn't fall apart in my hands. And I also kind of work that down into the pot with my finger, as you saw me just do as an example right there on the table. Um, and that flattening it as you go along will make it easier to clean up in the long run. Um, and then I'm gonna come through with my red soft rib and just really compress the interior seam. And then I will also do the same thing on the outside. Okay, and now for the lid. So we're gonna take this other piece of clay. It's pretty soft. Um, what I'm gonna do is kind of start working a little bit of curve with my rib. If you have a little sandbag, you can set it on your rim and pounce it down too. That um, is just fine. You wanna let this lid set up to leather hard. See where it's flexible, where I'm bending it there? that is too wet to um, make your lid. So I'm going to set this up in the upside down dome shape that you see and come back to it when it can hold its own shape like um, uncooked pasta. Okay, so we're back at this lid now that it's leather hard. It can hold its shape. So I'm gonna come underneath and draw a guide where the lid uh, meets the pot to cut a general shape. And you see I've done a little key there on the inside of the lid and on the, on the outside of the pot. So I'm always working from that point where that key is. Um, as I take my shore form, that's S-U-R, um, you can find these at Home Depot or I think Mud Tools sells them. They're like cheese graters. And you can uh, cheese grate down the sides that don't fit. So you just kind of put the lid in the flange, take a look where you need to grate some away, and take a piece of plastic, lay it across the rim so you can pull the lid in and out easily, um, and then pull it out, shave some down, put it back in there, see where you need to adjust. Another thing I do is I will short form the bottom of the lid so that it sits down in the flange a little more flush. Um, I'll come through with my fingers and then a chamois and refine the edge of that lid um, so that it's, you know, nice and thin when you pick it up and not like a square slab like what you see here. And then um, let I'll let that once I chamois it, it's going to be wet, so I don't want to stick it in the pot. And I don't want it to adhere itself. I'll let that dry out just a little bit, and then I'll fire those two things together.
Okay, so I'm gonna make a little handle for the top. And what I'm doing, it's a little wishbone shape, or excuse me, uh, not a wishbone, a dog bone shape. Um, so it, it's thin in the middle and flares out at each end. I kind of coax it in the center with my thumb to get it to bend in half. Um, and that will help avoid cracking. And then you also, if you don't use super dry clay, that will also help you to avoid cracks in, when you're bending clay. Um, we're gonna attach that, slip and score it on. And then what I'm gonna do um, is add a little key of clay here. And that is so that I don't have to guess each time which direction that lid fits on best. I'm setting mine a little off to the center off of the center, um, but you can put it dead center if you want to. It's, you know, this is your circus and these are your monkeys. Um, and then the last thing we're gonna do is talk about a spoon for your little salt cellar. I also start that spoon with a little dog bone shape and then um, I'll flare out one end and push the other end with my thumb. I'll show you that here in a second. So I'm backtracking here a little bit, um, which is why you see the lid unfinished in the background. This spoon that I made ended up being too big and I did make a much smaller version of this for this salt cellar, but this one was the better video clip to show you how it's done. Um, you're gonna roll a little waste into that clay and I flare it out just by pinching it between my thumb and index um, up the side and then at the end there. And then I'm gonna place it on the sponge, pu um, push the little ball or tip of clay at the bottom that you see there. Um, I'm gonna push that with my thumb. And I am facing my thumb to the outside of the spoon, right there. Give it a little push. And then you can refine everything um, as you go and voila, you have a spoon. Um, and then at the end, I will add a little holder onto the spoon and attach that either to the back or the side of your salt cellar, uh, whatever you prefer. And that is that. You have a little spice or salt cellar for your countertop. And they're really fun to make. They make great gifts. I really hope you enjoy making the project. Thanks for watching. One little quick thing I want to add. Um, when you add your little handle holder um, to the side for your spoon, um, remember to make sure that your spoon slides in and out easily um, so that you don't have to make other ones to fit it later. All right, that's all I've got. Thanks for watching.